When printing with more than one filament, Bamboo Studio automatically generates a prime tower. This can be turned off, which can uh, expedite printing time and reduce plastic waste. In this video, I'll show you the functions of the prime tower and I'll share my own opinions on the use of this function. So what exactly is a prime tower? Let's take a look at what uh, Bamboo Lab says. In Studio, go to the other tab. Here you see the prime tower options. The first option is enable. Obviously, you can turn the tower off completely by deselecting this option. Also, while hovering over the word enable, you get a brief explanation. And if you click on the word, it will open the web link you see and you will get a very detailed explanation as shown here. There are a few pages of illustrated learning, uh, well worth reading, but briefly, they only address uh, two things. They explain how the prime tower is used to clean the extruder when switching color so you get a more crisp uh, color print. And they explain how the tower can be used to make a smooth time lapse video where the print head moves out of the way after each layer. I can think of more reasons the prime tower is turned on automatically. First uh, is when you use a different type of filament, a support material. And second is when you use a different type of material that you actually want to print and merge with the main material. Let's talk about all four of these scenarios and how you might want to choose to either turn the prime tower on or off. But before I do that, I should mention that Bamboo is releasing a brand new printer in a few days from the day of this video. This printer is rumored to have a dual extruder print head and thus it may just eliminate the need for a prime tower and should be able to greatly reduce or eliminate the filament flushing, commonly known as filament poop. Of course, that is if you use two or less uh, filament. But for now, let's deal with what we have. I will start by addressing the easiest one, namely the smooth time lapse. I'm showing here traditional time lapse. That's the only mode I use. If you're in the business of selling 3D printed product, or if you need a video clip for an important presentation, I would think that smooth mode would enhance your demonstration. But for most people, traditional mode is probably more than enough. So how do you turn smooth mode on? Once again, you go to the Others tab. In that tab, you'll find a section called Special Mode, and there you find Time Lapse. And again, by hovering over the word, you get a brief explanation, and clicking on the word brings you to the full website explanation. The short version is that the prime tower is needed to clean off melted plastic that might ooze while the print head is moving out of the way. Next, let's talk about uh, using the prime tower while doing multicolor printing. I made a switch panel for my RV, so indeed I used the prime tower to avoid smearing of the white letters on black background. But if I'm just making a tool or a gadget where the color quality is not that important, I will turn off the prime tower, especially if the second color is the only color in a few layers. Now let's talk about some more tricky situations involving the prime tower. I do use uh, different materials for print support and here I found some reasons to use the tower in some cases. Incidentally, I have an entire video on how to use uh, different support materials. Here I'm showing you the dust port uh, tool attachment from the beginning of this video. I use PLA for the print with PETG uh, support. Had I not done it this way, the print would have completely failed. Let me show you why. The white uh, plastic is obviously the PLA, the main uh, print material, and the PETG support material is red here. I will use the layer slider to show you what is happening. If you look closely at the dust port, you can see that part of it is horizontal. Internally, without support, you would be printing all thin air and the print would fail. Conversely, if I use PLA for the support, there is no way I would be able to remove this internal support. PLA and PETG does not stick together well and it becomes very easy to remove the support with this thin layer of PETG. If you haven't tried this technique, you will be amazed at not uh, only how much easier this is, 
but also how the print quality is greatly improved. There's a link to my video on these techniques in the description. There are other areas of this particular print that needed support as shown here. And that leads directly back to the question of the prime tower. You see, my first print of this tool actually failed after a short time of use. I'm pretty sure the 15% infill was uh, insufficient, so I changed it to 100%. I also strengthened the design. However, it occurred to me that since I had the prime tower disabled, perhaps I had a small amount of PLA and PETG mixture in the print itself, weakening the tool. I had a similar experience with another tool as uh, shown here. So the decision to uh, use prime tower or not in this type of scenario comes down to determining if the support layers can cause integrity issues. In either case, I strongly suggest you consider the flush options. For mixed uh, filament types, if you have the flushing set into the infill, you're virtually guaranteed an integrity problem. So for this type, I would strongly suggest using flush into the uh, object support. We're down to the last scenario where you're trying to make different filament types stick together. Yes, this can be done with some measure of success. I made some magnetic spacer bench dogs for my workbench. I added some TPU caps that are glued on, but later I figured out a way to just print them on. It's not a perfect adhesion, but just as good as super glue, and it is much cleaner. If bamboo ever adds brick layer printing, this should be near perfect. Anyway, the decision in this type of scenario about uh, prime tower is really easy. In my opinion, you should definitely turn off the prime tower. I could be wrong, but it does seem to me that the more mixing of filament types you can get in that transition layer, the better for strength. You have shown a few tools in this video. What are they for and how do I find them to download? I have already uploaded many tool videos and I literally have hundreds of videos planned. Many of the planned videos are about inventions I made and about tools and attachments you cannot buy. In all the videos involving 3D printed items, I include, include links to the files so you can download them and print them for your own use. Do you have other similar videos? And how will I know when you post more videos? Well, I think you do know the answer to that one. <laughs>